Welcome heroes! Today we replace the steering rack on my Mazda RX-8. When you have seen my former videos, um, you may know that uh, I had some problems beginning of the year that the electric supported steering uh, had a failure. This is the warning light you don't want to see in your Mazda RX-8. First step is uh, jacking the car up. I use the front ends from the frame as it's documented in the service manual and uh, now we can start to remove the front under tray here. When removing the under tray ensure to remove also the ABS signal line here. It's attached here to the under tray. The hardest part is to remove the last plastic clip without breaking it, so more here in the, in the front area. Okay, finally, after a lot of clips and some 8 and 10 mm bolts, the under tray is removed. Ensure that you have uh, some spare parts there, they are easily available. I used the opportunity to do some rust prevention here or rust removal and um, now we can start to remove the steering. So first thing is to remove the splint pins here and then the nut. Use a 17 mm socket to remove the nut. Same procedure on the other side. Before removing the steering linkage, ensure that the steering wheel is in the center position. To remove the steering rack, you need to remove these two brackets here holding the radiator. Tie rod ends are removed using such kind of tool. Next step will be removal of the connectors for the wiring harness. The wiring harness is secured here with two zip ties. Cut them through. I removed all connectors and now I'm Removing here the bolt for the steering column. Okay, everything is loose. Now it's time to actually remove the steering rack here with these four big bolts. They are tightened with 100 newton meters or so, so you need a lot of power here to remove them. I struggled to remove the bolt here at the top, so I decided to remove the stabilizer. When I received the replacement steering rack, I was surprised because it didn't look the same as my old one. Here on the top is my old one. I will show you a picture to compare the one I received before. And uh, yeah, this was unfortunately for a right hand drive car. So the next step will be to install the new steering rack into the car, back again. The steering rack comes pre-centered hopefully, so I also centered the steering wheel. So I installed it temporary with this bolt and uh, this bolt over here. The other uh, two are still loose and um, it's important to put the screws first into the holes here before you actually try to attach uh, the steering column back in because otherwise you won't have enough space here between the radiator and the screw. And um, my idea is now to loose this screw and then put the steering column a little bit down. My wife helped me to uh, fix it the steering wheel uh, because you really need both hands here to wiggle the steering column in. Um, the steering wheel is centered so uh, next step is now to uh, fix this clamp here with the screw. Torque spec for the screw is something between 18 and 26 or so newton meters. You need an extension for your torque wrench and then it shouldn't be a problem to reach the bolt from below. Yeah, before I installed uh, the bolt for the steering uh, column I 
hand tighten these bolts here for the steering rack and um, now I need to torque spec them. It's between 75 and 105 newton meters. This is the steering harness. It has a ground cable which will be attached with this screw here. Now what I also removed there, I didn't mention it before, is here is uh, some kind of foam in between. I will yeah, I'll glue it back on when I have done my work here. The steering rack was resprayed. I will use uh, sandpaper here to ensure that the grounding uh, still works. To support the wiring harness, just use zip ties. I will now glue this uh, foam thing here back in place. I think this is just to protect the area from dirt. Maybe some sound insulation, I don't know. To gain space, I remove the anti roll bar and will now install it back. The anti roll bar is back in. Now I will install the tie rod ends. I recommend aftermarket, back to back. The aftermarket and the original ones are looking pretty much the same. So, shouldn't be any issue to use one of the better brands here from aftermarket. I measured before I removed the old steering rack um, here the distance between the nut and this marker and counted the threads and I will exactly use the same distance now. This is as exact as I can do it now and uh, yeah, later I will bring it to the dealer to realign maybe the whole suspension. After installing back the steering rack and connecting everything it's time to recalibrate the e computer to control your electric steering and to do so i recommend the program forescan forescan is an obd tool and uh, as the name suggests it's from the time where mazda and ford Cooperated, so a lot of, of the protocols between Ford and Mazda from the let's say early 2000 are shared. In this case, here we are interested in the EPS computer, and uh, here in Forescan, you can select your EPS computer and also reset. Here the torque sensor. To do so, just add all the EPS sensors here and uh, then you can just click here on ON to recenter uh, your torque sensor. It's important that the car is perfectly straight and uh, your steering wheel is perfectly straight. And then you can basically do the same thing here with uh, Forescan as you could do at the Mazda dealer. After resetting the error codes with Forescan and uh, recalibrating the torque sensor, everything should be fine again. And hopefully your electric supported steering works again in your Mazda RX-8. Thanks for watching and see you next time.